If you're subscribed to this channel, chances are you're interested in freedom, enlightenment, self-realization, whatever you want to call it. But if you look around, how many people have actually achieved this ultimate free state? After all, if you think about all the masters that you've heard of or that you know about, both past and present, and you're to name all of them, you would probably run out before you run out of fingers. So if there are this few that are able to go all the way, then what chance do you have? Now, today we're gonna to take a look at what is required to achieve this ultimate state of freedom and how you can do it. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, the simple way to self-realization. So if you want total control of your mind and more happiness and abundance in your life, then you've come to the right place. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. You're gonna love what we show you, primarily because it is 100% experiential, meaning you have to believe what I say, but you could take it for checking, try what we show you and see the results you get. And if you're a regular here, you love the work that we do and it makes a big difference in your life, then let us know. Hit the like button below and share your gains, share your stories, and also share this with your friends. Let's spread this wonderful work and help make the world a much more positive, loving, and harmonious place. Now talk about getting to the place of absolute love and harmony. Over the years, I've heard many people ask this question. How many people have gone free like Lester? How many people have achieved what Lester did? And there have been countless discussions of people trying to figure that out. And there have been people making excuses like, well, Lester had a heart attack and it was because of that motivation. That was the key for him to go all the way or that he did so many years and years of psychoanalysis and is, is because of all that work that he was able to go all the way. But basically, these are just excuses. If you want a real answer, all you have to do is just listen to Lester. He's been telling this to you all the time, such as when he says, don't release to get high, but get high to release because what happens is a lot of us after we learn this method we tend to only use it when we're down in the dumps when we're feeling lousy when we're in pain then we pull out our releasing tools and we start using it but once we start getting out of that misery and we start feeling okay again we stop and it isn't until we start going back down and get into that pain and discomfort that we start releasing again. And let's just point this out. We're just like on this roller coaster ride of just ups and downs with very little growth along the way. And let's just say, just step on the gas, keep that trajectory up and just go for it. Now also, Lester said that we must all be a winner in life because if we aren't a winner, it just means that we have anti-winning programs in our mind. And he said this in a number of different ways. Like, for example, when talking about the body, he said that, should we try to achieve a perfect body? I would say yes, absolutely yes, if you cannot do it. Now, some people responded that that sounds like a contradiction. If you can't do it, then you should do it. And Lester said, absolutely, that's exactly what I'm saying. You need to turn your inability into ability. And also, Lester pointed out that you need to make releasing constant. That's right there in the six steps. And he also mentioned that one of his secrets was that he used concentration. It was his focus his concentration, his determination that took him all the way. So what does this mean? 
basically what Les is talking about. And if you've been practicing the method for a number of years and you found that you haven't gotten to that perfect place, it just means that you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Now in bodybuilding, I'm gonna give you an example, a real world example of what Lester's talking about because I found this parallel in experience that I've been experiencing in the past couple of years where in bodybuilding, when you want to grow muscle, one of the keys to doing so is something that they call progressive overload. Which means basically if you're doing an exercise like bench press and you give it your all, you go as hard as you can with the idea that the next time you show up and do that exercise again, you're going to go just as hard as you just did, plus a little bit more. Whether that's like a few more reps or adding on some more weight or just doing the exercise slower, right? Every time you show up, the idea is you go harder than last time. It's a pretty simple concept. And it's a practice that I have found if you just do it, you cannot help but get results. Because I started working out about two years ago now. And when I started, I had zero muscle tone. Like my uh, tricep muscles were just like flappy pterodactyl wings. Also, I was quite a bit overweight. I was like maybe 20 pounds overweight with about 30% body fat. And when I started at the gym two years ago, I started off with a strong intention and armed with this practice, this idea of progressive overload. So in a very short time, Actually, just in a couple of months, I dropped that fat percentage from 30% down to 15%. And over the course of the first year, I built at least 12 pounds of raw muscle. And so in just one year's time, I had a massive, dramatic change to my body composition. And ever since then, in this past year, it's just gotten better and better. Now. Over the last two years, I've also watched other people show up at the gym. People have been showing up regularly. And over the past two years, I've been looking at them and there's been no change from two years ago till today. Whether it's you know their weight or their muscle mass. And I noticed a difference. All these people when I watch them, they're just kind of lazily and aimlessly going from one machine to the next. You could tell they're just kind of going through the motions and they're not really pushing themselves. Also, I've seen people like on uh, the treadmill machines, you know, doing cardio and they're not really pushing themselves on there either. They're just kind of like, they look like they're bored and they're just going through the motions. And that always perplexed me. Because if you're going to commit the time to show up and do the work, why not really push yourself and do it to the fullest so you can see real world results? Now, I don't mean to put anybody down. That's right. You just get out of our face and have another bowl yeah, of you know, and dust. If you don't work out, somebody should grab you by the jockstrap and give you the wedgie of your life. Yeah. Because it's great that they're doing whatever that they're doing. So I don't mean to judge anybody or ridicule them at all. I'm just pointing out a difference. And it's this very simple concept of progressive overload that just makes all the difference in the world. Now, how does this apply to releasing? Well, one thing that I learned from my teacher, Larry Crane, is that it's not what you say it's what you do. It's in the results that you get. And Larry was always a results oriented person. Whenever he was 
doing a class over the telephone, or he was doing like a, uh, you know, a free support call with lots of people showing up. He'd always start off every single one of these calls by asking people to share their gains. So I was going on about what are your gains? Share your gains, tell us your gains. And he always made a big point about that each and every time. And when people did share their gains, he'd give them acknowledgement. He'd give them <laughs> their just due credit for doing that. And at the same time, he would encourage them to go further. All right, so, oh, you released and got $100. Wonderful. Now, go for $1,000. Or you're able to reduce the medication that you don't want to take anymore. Great. All right, keep going till you don't have to take it at all. So he's always encouraging people, go further. Go harder than last time, basically. And so this is something that you can look at and analyze for yourself. What are my gains? And get focused on not just making goals, but setting goals that you could achieve, achieve those goals, and then just step it up. I know a lot of people, they talk about gains such as, well, I got a, a good parking space. Well, that's fantastic. But how about really stepping up and get to the place where, for example, you don't have to work for a living. How about that? Don't just settle for little crumbs. Keep pushing yourself. Keep working at it. Keep releasing and see those gains get bigger and bigger and bigger. And this all goes back to Lester, where he always stressed that goals are an important thing to do. You should be working on goals. Many of you have heard that conversation that he had with that graduate, Michael Aronin, where he said, all right, so you set a goal to be in a Broadway show and you got it. Then you set a goal to be in a Hollywood movie and you got it. Then you set a goal to have a house in the Hamptons and you got it. And what happened? You stopped. If you had just stepped on the gas, kept doing what you're doing, you would have been free in no time. And again, that example of Michael Aronin shows us that when we get to a place where we just feel comfortable and we stop, sometimes it's pride that we fall into. Hey, I'm in a good place. I don't need to release anymore. Well, guess what? Michael Aronin took a nosedive. I saw him a number of years ago. He came to one of the retreats and all those gains that he had, he just blew them all. And he wasn't living so comfortably anymore. But here's the thing, gains matter. And anybody who tells you differently is lying to you. I've seen some self-appointed releasing teachers talk about how gains aren't that important. It's more about the good feels, the good vibes. You shouldn't push yourself. Just be, be who you are. The thing is, anybody who talks to you like that, the way Larry used to put this is, they're just blowing in your ear. They're telling you what you want to hear. Oh, you don't have to push yourself. Just be and just accept yourself as you are. I mean, it sounds nice and spiritual, but really what they're doing is they're just looking for your approval. And in some instances, they're looking to make you dependent upon them because they're buttering you up, then you need to come back to them to get buttered up a little bit more. And so I, that's why I said, if you come across anybody like this, run away. They're lying to you. They're not representing the power of the method that Lester demonstrated and what he talked about. Now also, coming back to the parallel between bodybuilding and releasing, Another parallel that I found is that in both cases, all you have to do is keep it simple. Like with bodybuilding, there's really three keys. One is progressive overload. Another is nutrition, like getting lots of protein in to fuel your muscles. And the third thing is get enough sleep. 
so there's time for your muscles to rebuild. That's it. If you just do those things, like I said, you can't help but get results. And the same thing with the method. All you have to do is just those simple six steps, and that's it. Now, a lot of people in both situations, like with bodybuilding, there's so many rabbit holes to fall down into. You just go look at on YouTube, all these fitness influencers, they're selling you on all sorts of ideas and ways of looking at it and techniques and nutrition and supplements and all this stuff. And you can just get lost in the complexity and not do the work. And the same thing with releasing. You can <laughs> look at this way of releasing and this fifth way of releasing and another way of releasing and the free way to releasing and on and on and on, adding these other ideas and it just adds more complexity and it takes you further away from the simple thing that gets you results. So that's why Lester said, keep it simple, sweetheart. And another parallel is one thing that Lester said about releasing, and I think a lot of us have experienced this, is that when we start initially, there's a certain degree of effort. Like sometimes we struggle just to get a sense of letting go. And we have to work at it for a while until it finally clicks in. And also, those of us who stop from time to time, I know I've done this myself, where we get distracted, we stop releasing for a while, then we try to get back into it and it just feels like a struggle. Like It feels like we don't even know how to release anymore. And what Lester said is, it takes effort initially to undo the effort. And it's just like with building muscle, going to the gym. When you first go there, not only is there a lot of effort, but it's like you experience a bunch of pain. And you know, after you're done, you're sore. You can barely move for the next couple of days. But as you continue doing it, it gets less and less. And that effort that you have to put into it and the pain and the soreness just drops away. And it's like you've got this momentum and you're just cruising with it and just getting better and stronger and stronger. Same thing with releasing. If you stop for a while and you try to go back, it just feels like, oh, it's just so much negativity there and it's painful and there's a lot of resistance and I don't want to do this anymore. It's not worth it. But if you, if you stay determined and you decide to do it, I don't care. I don't care that it's uncomfortable. I don't care if I've got some feelings coming up that I don't like. I'm going to walk them up anyway. I'm going to bring them up, let, them, let myself feel them. If I have to feel them, so what? But I'm going to bring them up so I can let them go. And as you do it, and as you keep releasing, it gets better and better. You get lighter and lighter and the releasing gets easier and easier. And on another note of that, I remember before I did any of this weight training, I used to look at bodybuilders, people who went to the gym and thinking, that just seems horrible. Like it's a torture session. They go to the gym every day and they just torture themselves, put themselves through a bunch of effort and pain. I don't know anybody who'd want to do that. And sometimes we look at all these feelings that we have to go through. Sometimes it feels like we're opening up Pandora's box. And it's like, I don't know if that's even worth it. However, what I found out after I started training is a little secret that bodybuilders have that most people don't understand. And I think that there's a scientific reasoning for it. They, they say that, you know, bodybuilding releases a lot of dopamine 
in your symptom, you know, in your system. Because let me tell you, once you get on a roll going to the gym and you get this momentum going, it is just a constant high. And when you're at the gym and you talk to other you know, bodybuilders, people who are serious, people who are using progressive overload, who are really working themselves. The experience is like this brotherly thing. You know, not in a macho way, but just in a, hey, this is so awesome, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is. Isn't it the most greatest thing? That's kind of the experience that we all share. And it's the same thing with releasing. You know, from the outside, it feels like, oh, you have to dig into all these feelings. Who wants to do that? But once you do it, and once you get on a roll, like releasers, when they talk to each other, it's like, hey, this is the greatest thing, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. And so that's it. That's the key. So it's everything that Lester talks about. And like I said, don't wuss out and don't use excuses like, oh, you shouldn't push yourself. That's too egotistic. Lester was always nudging the graduates, always. Like Larry used to say, Lester would come up to him regularly and ask him, Larry, how does it take to do a two week job? And Larry would said that he would squirm and go, yeah, Lester, I know I'm working on it. And Lester said, don't work on it, just do it. And also Lester said to graduates who, who claimed that they were in a nice, good place and they're in a place in life where lots of things were working for them. And Lester said, that's great, but get to the place where you could just think and have things happen. Don't just rest on your laurels. Push yourself and go for it. Go for the ultimate. So that's his message. And that's the key. If you want to achieve the freedom, Lester has been showing us and showing us the way. He's been showing us the way all along and following his steps. It's simple. It's easy. And you could do it. Now, let's do a little bit of releasing to cap all of this off. Now, see if you've been trying to figure out how to go free, how to go all the way. And maybe you've been trying to figure this out for a while, like ever since you started this journey of releasing. All right, so ask your mind right now if it has the answer. Just ask it. If it knows how to achieve what Lester did. Now, of course, your mind has some ideas. It'll probably repeat some things that Lester said. It'll probably repeat some of the things I talked about here. But it can't really show you the way. If it could, you would have done it already, right? So asking your mind is a waste of time. It doesn't have an answer. And notice, you keep going to your mind, trying to figure it out over and over and over again. And that's about as silly as looking for an answer in an empty drawer. And you keep going back to that empty drawer over and over again, looking for an answer that isn't there. It's silly. It's ridiculous. So we can just set that aside and just drop that mind for the moment. Now, take a look to see if you've been judging yourself. Maybe judging yourself for not being a good releaser not being able to get results. In other words, see if you've been beating yourself up over it. And how does that help you to beat yourself up? And what does beating yourself up have to do with releasing? All right, that's the antithesis of releasing. And you see the results that you get by beating yourself up. You see what that feels like. So you see that that's a waste of time. Now who's doing it? You're doing it, right? So if you're doing it, beating yourself up, 
that it's not getting you the results that you're looking for. It's not taking you to freedom, obviously. Now is the time to make a decision, a smart decision. I'm going to be positive and love myself. Or I'm going to be negative and beat myself up. What do you decide? All right, it's your decision. All right, well, I'm, I'm assuming you're deciding to be positive. So could you let go of disapproving of yourself? Since you've been doing that, you need to reverse that trend now. So could you let go of disapproving of yourself? And could you let go of disapproving of yourself a little bit more? And could you let go disapproving of yourself a little bit more? And could you let go disapproving of yourself even more? And could you let go disapproving of yourself even more? And could you let go disapproving of yourself some more? And could you let that go a little bit more? And it's just a decision. That's all it is. Yes or no. That's it. Just decide now. And could you let go disapproving of yourself a little bit more? Yes or no? And some more. And some more. And even more. And even more. And notice how you feel. Just notice you feel a bit lighter. That's all we're looking for. Notice the difference? All right, now, could you give yourself a little bit of approval? Because that's a smart thing to do. And again, it's just a decision. It's not about blowing in your ear, telling yourself nice things about, oh, I'm so smart, I'm a good person, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just very straightforward. In other words, could you just like yourself right now? No reason, just because. And could you give yourself a little bit more approval? And could you give yourself a little bit more approval? And could you give yourself even more approval? And a little bit more. And some more. And even more. And even more. And could you give yourself even more approval? And a little bit more. Notice how you feel now. See the difference? And see how easy, see how simple, and see how fast this is. Just to have a shift right now. If you keep on doing this, this experience just gets better and better until you just pop right into freedom. Now, that's just a simple demonstration, but it just shows you that once you put your attention on it, you're there, you're doing it. And you just need to keep on getting higher and higher and higher and higher. So keep this up. Keep progressively overloading yourself. It's not about pushing yourself. It's not about forcing anything, but it's having that strong intention. I'm going all the way. Now, I'm not gonna let anything stop me. I'm not gonna make any excuses. I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna look at the results. And if I'm not getting the results, then I need to take responsibility for that own up to it, look within myself, and you'll find the answer. You'll see where it is that you're holding yourself back because you're doing it. And ultimately you are unlimited. So you can pull yourself through it. You just need that intention. So keep going, keep releasing, and most importantly, show up at a class. Because that is where you really start kicking things in high gears. Because one of the big benefits of being in a class is a sense of accountability. Now, 
within that first year that I started uh, weight training, I was having some challenges, basically some injuries, some soreness, because I was pushing really hard that I was, you know, kind of overloading my tendons and so on. So I hired a coach, a professional, someone that was a friend of mine on Facebook. When I saw his picture, I said, well, he certainly looks like he knows what he's doing. And so I hired him on as a coach. And just like a good releasing teacher, this guy, Adam, he, he didn't do anything for me. He just gave me the assignments to do. He tracked my results, had me submit my gains, and also connected me with a like-minded community, a group of people also working with him. So we had a support network together. And most of all, Adam's approach is very much like Lester. It's all about keeping it simple with the nutrition, with the workouts, all of that. Just keep it simple, sweetheart. Plus with his guidance and his encouragement, it just put me in a position when I was working with him that I'm gonna make the most out of this. I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna do the work. And so for the period of time I worked with him, that was when I made my greatest gains. So a coach is good. Classes are good because they're an opportunity for you to step up. So use these opportunities and fulfill what it is that sparked your interest when you started this work. Where deep in your heart, you know that what Lester's talking about is true. Part of you knows that. So now's the time to step on the gas and bring that part out in full force. All right? So keep at it. And by the way, if you want a good fitness trainer, I highly recommend Adam. I'll put his links in the description below. He's a great coach, so I'll, I'll leave his info down below. All right? So keep it up. Happy releasing. And I'll see you on the next video.